I had to do to get something off my chest. Now, something bothers me in the art world, or at least in the world of independent art makers, and that is that a lot of people seem to hold this uh, assumption that your work's only going to get off the ground if you wait for a studio to come and pick it up. Now, this is completely unrealistic, especially nowadays when the internet makes uh, making these pieces of work accessible to other people without the intervention of a studio a lot easier. Technology has lowered in price to a point that almost anyone could to get access to a computer to make their work. And yet still people are held back by this belief that they've got to sit around and wait for a studio to accept that their work is any good. I wanted to come here today to dispel this myth because why waste time? Why not seize the day now and make your own work? My time making an animated movie has been a very improvised learning experience. Um, a lot of things I've learnt on the go through watching documentaries, generally picking up information anywhere. Uh, I haven't actually been to university, so a lot of the techniques I've learned under my own steam. And I'd like to pass some of this information on to you, because I think it could be really useful for a lot of people, especially people with a real desire to get their work seen by others, but are still stuck in that weird mind rut of uh, not being able to do it themselves, for whatever reason. Anyway, so I present to you Gemma's crash course for making independent animated movies. This technique could potentially work for other things as well, like books and games, but since I'm only making an animated movie, that's the angle I'm going to come at it from. Okay, to start you off, you need three main things. Number one, a strong idea. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be strong in uh, terms of what the market thinks is strong, or what other people around you think is cool. It's got to be strong in your opinion. It's got to be something that you have some very good base plot points as to where it's going to go. If you just got like this one idea and you're not really quite sure what it's going to do, then your motivations are going to run out pretty quick because you'll be sitting around going, well, where do I take this idea? And, and then you'll get annoyed and the idea will go poof away somewhere. So the idea has to be strong. It's got to have depth got to have guts to it. Number two, you've definitely got to have belief in your idea. You've got to believe that it's got potential and you can take it where you want it to go. Self-belief in this stage is really important because at this point you're the only person supporting your idea really. Um, nobody else has been convinced as to whether it's worth looking at or not. If you don't have that confidence, like the previous point, you'll just make the idea fail. Third, and this is the most important thing, motivation. Motivation is this driving engine behind the entire thing. It's especially important when you're working by yourself because you've got to keep bucking yourself up, pushing yourself forward, reminding yourself that this is a project that when finished will give people some a really entertaining experience. So. I cannot stress enough how important motivation is. Main plot points can emerge through brainstorming, so those two are kind of tied together. An important thing to remember when brainstorming is put everything down. Empty your entire stream of consciousness onto paper, whether it be through notes, text, doodles, line graphs, anything. Anything that's expressing any potential idea for this project, just put it on a piece of paper. Don't try and think about whether it might not work, or whether it's too ridiculous, too overdramatic, or it won't link to another idea. Just empty everything onto paper, because the refining process follows, and if you think too hard in the initial stages, you could end up leaving ideas behind in your head that could have been really good for the main feature. And once you've got all these things down on a piece of paper, one suggestion is stick the paper up on the wall. All the pieces of paper, stick them up on any available large wall in your house and just observe them. Because this is a technique that's actually used by professional studios, is to stick all their notes and their explorations on the wall and examine them all at once. Because it enables your head to pick images out at the same time, or link them together or take them away, and uh, 
It makes the process more alive and interactive. Here are some early, early brainstorming for chimerites and uh, even Garikos over there. At one point, they were little bird things. I was trying to pull it away from their original designs, and I was trying to pull them away a little too harshly. Uh, I didn't give thought to the fact I could just make some minor adjustments and it would still work just as good. I was too worried about them uh, resembling the original designs that technically weren't mine. And so, as a result of that, at one point, Mala looked like a little bear thing. Ringo looked like a dragon with ears. Like a fox, so... And so, just brainstorm as many things as you need to. As you can see, I've written some things in notes and some things are just doodles to back the notes up. Uh, and just, just keep going until you can't think of any more possible ideas to run with. And once you've got basic design ideas, you can also explore concepts through use of comics. I find that very useful because it's a form of animatic. I also use this technique to make a storyboard. This is like a storyboard all crammed onto one bit of paper. I'm not entirely sure why people will make storyboards when they can make comics. I, I find storyboards a bit restrictive because they're very uniform and there's like one panel and then there's the next panel. Where here is I'm getting more of an idea of the flow of the action. But different things work for different people so you don't necessarily have to do comics, you don't necessarily have to do traditional storyboards. I personally find the comics is more Free, freeing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just brainstormed a lot of ideas through comics as well. This is before I, I've written the brunt of the script. Because it helps to uh, make the script writing easier, actually. Once you've got all the brainstormed ideas down and you have a general idea of how you want the main characters to look, the next stage is to create reference sheets. It's a good idea to get reference sheets made at this early stage because it helps you to define the characters' personalities better and their designs. And if you're going to be drawing an animatic, you don't want to be drawing an animatic where the designs are all, all over the place because you'll be referring back to said animatic when you make the draft version. So yeah, get some good, get some good reference sheets down. Uh, put all the useful details, no matter how small, on it, like things to do with her eyes and the hair and the poses and body language even if you want. Also another really useful thing is to create a height chart to compare the characters against one another because that will be especially important when you're making animations where they're standing in groups and you don't want really weird size inconsistencies. Now once you've got all the designs down on paper as reference sheets and don't don't go in thinking that that will be the final thing. Sometimes reference sheets will sort of evolve a bit over time, as I found with Muxlow. He started out with yellow hair, as you can see on the wall behind me, and ended up with brown. And uh, these things happen. If they aesthetically benefit the movie, make the changes. Don't be afraid to make changes, because it might seem painful at first, and sometimes your brain says, no, this looks weird. And that's what human brains tend to do if they get a big change. Initially, they're going to resist a big change. It's, I don't know, it's some kind of behavioural habit. But if you're brave enough to make changes that are important, then you'll find in the long run it benefits the whole movie. And the same mindset is good to have for writing script because you'll have a base script and over the course of months and years the script is going to change. The script is a ongoing thing. It's not you write a script, it's done. You can get to the middle of the movie and suddenly realise that that scene is completely unnecessary and take it out or put one in. So it's good to bear in mind that the project is never completely set as final by the time you get to making it. I think it takes some of the pressure off because you're not thinking, is this final yet? It could not be final until the very end, and even at the end it might not be final. I mean, like the people at Pixar say the film isn't finished, it's just released, and that's pretty accurate really, because you could finish a film and then think, oh, I could have put something else in there, and not feel bad about it. I mean, you could make another instalment if you wanted, with ideas like that. 
I don't really have any advice to offer on how to write a script. It's probably best to look into some uh, books on how to do that if you don't really have any ideas. I pretty much wrote a script from scratch, trial and error, and I think I did actually study a script on Back to the Future, and they did stuff like write things in capitals, which I didn't do. But it gave me a basic idea of how it's done, and that's important to look around and observe how other people might do things, and not necessarily copy them, but adapt the techniques to fit your own work style and personality. Now the timing in which you cast voice actors can vary by production and by who you're working with. You might find it more helpful to cast voice actors as early on as the animatic, which is what I did initially in Outcast Hero, although in retrospect I'm not quite so sure it was a good idea because as a production goes along things end up happening that you may have to recast voice actors because maybe their voice doesn't technically fit the part or they can't reach the emotional range you were hoping for and uh, doing it quite early in production it can be an additional stress that you might not need at that point. I suppose my personal advice would probably be wait as long as possible before you cast voice actors until you've got a really good idea of who you could ask and how much time they have and how strongly they feel they can portray that character for you. Um, one of the biggest advantages to having voice actors early on is they can often give you more embellishment to the character that you might not have thought they can actually get inside the character's head and give you dialogue and actions that may not have come into your mind. That is, that is a good plus, but on the downside, it can cause friction if you uh, suddenly realise that the person playing the character part doesn't actually fit the character as well as you were hoping. I've covered that a little bit in the previous stage I was talking about. And working independently can have its perks and its downfalls. Well, main downfalls being you don't have as many people to help speed the process up. Now this can also act as a perk, because when you're working by yourself, you don't have to give as much information to yourself, because you generally know what you want from a piece of work. Now if you're working with a small team of people, you will have to be a little more descriptive in your plans, so people can understand where you're coming from and they're all working from the same thing. I speeded up the production by skipping the storyboard stage and just going straight to the animatic. Storyboards I did do were in the form of comics, which helped me to get a general idea of how I wanted camera angles and poses and expressions to be. My animatic for Outcast Hero was initially drawn on bits of paper. Now, I personally wouldn't recommend doing this. The only reason I did it was because at the time I wasn't completely acquainted with Flash, and drawing it directly onto a digital canvas is probably a lot better to do because while it saves time and resources, but mostly time. Once you have the basics of the animatic down, you want to try and flesh it out a bit by using sound effects and temporary music to accentuate the environment. Now the reason we're going to be doing this is because the next stage is test screening. Test screening is another very important thing because it's bringing in other people, not any old people, people that you can trust, people you know aren't just going to troll you for the sake of getting their own back because they're jealous or whatever, but people who are interested in the project want to see it flourish, who you know you can rely on to give different kinds of feedback and you're going to show them the animatic with these temporary backing sounds on and ask them to give feedback and on that feedback you take what is valuable and you make edits to the animatic according to what works and the benefits of doing test screening is it's giving you an idea of how other people are interpreting your story. And you may discover that some people are watching a certain scene and getting something from it you completely didn't expect. And it could be in a good way and it could be in a bad way. And if it's in a bad way, it gives you the opportunity to edit it so the content better reflects what you had in mind. It really helps to get other people's views on what you're doing. Just make sure they're the right sort of people, not the people that are being deliberately destructive. I gotta say the sketch draft stage is one of the most patience trying stages in the production because at this point you've seen the story countless times and you may be sick of it by now and if you're not, 
good because you've got a long way to go yet. Sketch drafting is basically taking what you have on the animatic and fleshing out more, which is adding more frames of movement. So it's not just like panel by panel sort of interactive comic style, finalizing the proportions, making sure the angles are correct. Basically getting down the main structure which is going to be used for in between frames and inking and making sure that everything is the right size and the right angle and the right position because at this point you don't really want to go editing through it another time. If you discover at this point you need to make more edits, which you most likely will, it's best to create some mini comic storyboards to get the impression of what you want instead of going through the entire process of cutting and pasting frames into the animatic and then referring to the animatic. But don't be afraid to make edits at this point because I would say technically this is the last practical stage which to make edits. You, you might end up having to make some in the final stages but not recommended really because well, if you've inked and coloured everything you really don't want to rip it apart. And I know I know there's been instances of it happening in studios but it always makes me cringe when I hear about it. I just imagine those hours of work the animators put in and then the director coming along going nah, rip that out and you're like that was like a large portion of my life just disappeared there. That's, that's another good thing about independent animating is the only person that's really making those drastic changes is you and in a lot of cases it's easier to take that sort of abuse from yourself as opposed to somebody else. There's also the freedom to keep things in that people from studios might say makes the movie too long or aiming it at the wrong audience. And that's one thing I don't get, the whole length of movies problem. All I can figure is it's something to do with they assume that children can't sit and watch something for more than 90 minutes. They may be right. But I don't think I should restrict someone who is making a piece of art independently, I think. Make the film to the length that you think is right for that film and uh, assess it afterwards. If it does seem a little too long, you might need to trim it afterwards. But don't let those mindsets that already exist in professional streams, don't let those mindsets narrow your focus. Allow yourself a freedom. I mean, I was watching an interview with the director of Brave Little Toaster the other day, and he was saying how he just made a film the way he liked to see a film, and if other people liked it, that was great too. And that's exactly my mindset as well, and it was nice to hear that somebody else actually had that mindset. You know, don't make a film for kids or for adults. Make a film for people who like animation or for people who like sci-fi or fantasy or whatever genre you're making the film in. And uh, I think it comes into its own after that. And the last two stages, which I haven't actually approached myself yet, are the final stage and the post-completion stage, which is mainly involving promotional stuff like advertising and approaching any potential distributors if you want to go in that direction. The final stage consists of, well, all the cleanup stuff really. The in-between frames of the sketch draft to make the movements more smooth. Ink outlines, colours, shades, special effects. Anything that fleshes out the artwork and makes it more lush and more look like a professional finished production. And of course the sound effects and music which are very important to giving that extra level of emotion to a film. Just make sure that you remove the temporary music off your animatic if you're going to start pitching anything to potential composers because you don't really want to colour their ideas of what they might uh, compose for the film because even subconsciously that does happen. And that's all I really have to divulge on the process right now is as I personally am still in the midst of making a movie myself and hopefully I can make another video to give some more pointers once I get to those later stages. But as for this moment, my advice to you is don't let the opinion that you can't make a movie yourself stop you. Just go for it. And even if you can't take it to its final stages, even if you're just going to be making a draft version or a plan or an animatic to showcase to other people, other independent artists maybe, in order to get the work off the ground, just start the project. Run with it. Don't wait. Because time is short. Just seize the moment.